We are working with piecewise functions, and in the last few videos, I did an example where we evaluated it at specific values. We graphed it by hand, and then we double-checked our graph using the graphing calculator. That's what we're going to do again on this video, but we're going to do it with a different example, a different piecewise function. So here my function is labeled g of x. And you can see it has three pieces this time instead of two pieces. So I just wanted to show you the different variations of each of these piecewise functions. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate these. So we have examples A through E. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can evaluate them on your own. And then I will walk you through them step by step. Okay, the very first thing that we need to do with each of these examples is figure out what interval it fits into. So in part A, g of negative 4, I need to figure out which of these intervals over here on the right it fits into. Is it less than negative 2? Is it between negative 2 and 3? Or is it greater than 3? g of negative 4. So negative 4 is less than negative 2. So it fits in my first interval, which means I'm going to substitute it into my first piece. So that gives me negative 4 plus 1, which simplifies to be negative 3. So g of negative 4 is negative 3. In part B, we have g of 0. Again, the first step is to figure out which interval it fits into. 0 is between negative 2 and 3, and that's the way we interpret this interval here. x is between these two values. So 0 is between those two values. So I'm going to substitute it in for my second piece. It's almost too easy. It may seem like a trick question. Um, in the second piece, which is given by 5, there's no x value, which means we don't actually have to substitute it in at any place. We know that our answer is just guaranteed to be 5. So if you have any x value between negative 2 and 3, your output is guaranteed to be the 5, and that's it. In part C, we have g of 4. 4 is larger than or equal to 3, so that means we're going to substitute it in for our third piece. So that gives me 4 squared, which tells me that g of 4 is equal to 16. Same things with part D and E, g of negative 2. Now this one here, negative 2, is kind of a divider between our two pieces. It's a divider between the first piece and the second piece. So we have to figure out which one it fits into. We're going to use the one that has the or equal to bar. So since my second interval says x is between negative 2 and 3, but equal to negative 2 or including negative 2, that means I'm going to substitute it in for my second piece. Again, there's no x value there, so that means our answer is guaranteed to be 5. In part E, it's the same thing. 3 is one of my dividing pieces between my second and my third piece. I'm going to use the one that is or equal to, because in my third piece, 3 is greater than or equal to 3. So it fits in that interval, which means I substitute it in for my third piece. So that is 3 squared, which tells me g of 3 is equal to 9. So hopefully you're starting to feel more comfortable with knowing which piece you plug it into. It all goes back down to which interval it fits into first, and then of course you substitute it into the corresponding piece. Remember, you plug it into one and only ever one piece. Okay, now that we've evaluated it, let's go ahead and graph it. And remember that I can start by plotting these points and then try and fit my graph to these points, or let me just graph it by hand first, and then I can double check my points after that. So what I'm going to do here is exactly the same thing I did the first time I graphed these, 
is I'm going to graph each piece in its entirety and then go back and fit it in with the interval that we're specifically looking for. So let's start with the first piece. Let me graph it in blue. Let me graph x plus 1 in blue. So I have to graph the equation y equals x plus 1. This is a linear equation, so I can compare it with the general equation y equals mx plus b, where b is our y-intercept. So in this case, our y-intercept is 1, so that tells me I can plot that point there. And then m is my slope. So in this case, my slope is 1, or I can write it as 1 over 1, which means my slope is up 1 over 1 in the right direction, or down one, left one, in the left direction. So that tells me what my line's going to follow. So I just need to graph this guy here. So here is the graph of the line y equals x plus 1. Now this line is for my whole graph. I only want this line when x is less than negative 2. So I need to figure out where x is equal to negative 2 at. So this is where x is equal to negative 2. There's my dividing piece. And if I want less than negative 2, that means I want everything to the left of it. So that means I only want this portion of my graph here. So that means I need to get rid of everything else on the other side of my graph. Now I need to figure out what's happening at the end point. Since there is no or equal to bar, that means I have an open point on my end point. So that means this thing here is my graph to the left. Okay, so that means I have my first piece there. Let's move on to my second piece. Let me graph it in green. So I have to graph the equation y equals 5. It might be too easy that it almost seems tricky. The thing to note here is that whenever we had y equals a number, this is a horizontal line. So if you don't remember this, you might go back and review the horizontal line video where all of my y values are 5. So I just need to figure out where 5 is on my y-axis. And basically, this is a horizontal line at that point. So here is my graph of my second piece, y equals 5. Now, I've graphed that all the way through, but I only really want this graph when x is between negative 2 and 3. So I find my separators. Here's where x equals negative 2. Here's where x equals 3. And I want my graph to be between these two values here, so between those there. So I need to get rid of everything on the outside. So let me erase everything over there and everything over there. So I just have my horizontal line between those two green lines. And I need to figure out endpoints. My negative 2 is or equal to, so that means I do have a closed point. My 3 is not, so that means I have an open point at that place. Okay. So that means I'm done with my second piece. Okay, let's move on to my third piece. Let me do it in red of x squared. So this is a parabola. You just learned about that. Um, it opens up. And my vertex is at 0, 0. So I can plot my vertex here. And if you need to help you plot specific points, that's fine. If I were to plug in positive or negative 1, that would give me out positive 1. If I were to plug in positive 2 or negative 2, that would give me 4. And if I were to plug in positive or negative 3, that would give me out 9. So here is my parabola, looks like this, but we only want this graph here when x is bigger than 3. So I need to figure out where 3 is at, so this is where x is equal to 3, and I only want everything larger than it, so I want everything to the right of this. 
So that really means from here and over. So I need to get rid of everything else. So I'm not really going to see much of this graph. I have a point here. I know this is a closed point at 3 because it is or equal to, and everything to the right of it. So it's going to look like a parabola going up like that. Everything else is not actually on this graph. So I need to get rid of all of my other red pieces. Okay, so this gives me the graph of my piecewise functions. I have dealt with every part of this piecewise function. So let me get rid of all of these extra separating things that I have identified in the first place. So here is the end result of my piecewise function, including all of the endpoints either having closed circles or open circles, depending upon what my intervals tell me. All right, now let's go ahead and double check this by using our graphing calculator. So let me pull up my calculator here. So I have my calculator here. What I need to do is I need to plug in each of these pieces over each of their intervals that they are defined to be. So my first piece is x plus 1. Remember to put it in parentheses because this whole interval is going to be graphed over the inequality of x is less than, remember your less than symbols are underneath the test or the second math feature. So 5 is less than and my x value that separated my first interval was negative 2. Now let me jump to my third piece and I'll explain why here in a minute. My third piece was x squared and I should have entered that in in parentheses. So I'm going to insert, second delete is insert a parenthesis to the left here. Insert a parenthesis to the right and that is graphed over the interval when x is greater than or equal to, so second math for my test feature, option 4 is greater than or equal to, and my separator was 3. So those are done just like we did in the last video. In my second piece, the function was just identified as 5, and that is over the interval, if I look at it, the interval was defined to be negative 2 is less than x is less than 3. But the calculator will not interpret it correctly if you type it in exactly like this. So you actually have to separate this interval out to what it means. It means x is between negative 2 and 3, or the separator is x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 3. So that's a different way we can interpret it. Well, that's the way that we're going to have to type it in the calculator. So we separate that interval into the actual two intervals that is defined by. So I have to do over the first interval, which is x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and also over the second interval, which is x is less than 3. So if you have a between statement like we saw in this example, and you will if it's ever a 3 piecewise function where it has 3 pieces, you're going to have to separate out the intervals that we have here. So let me graph this on my standard window, zoom 6. And we should get the graph that what we have graphed by hand. And we can see that this matches with the graph that we have drawn by hand pretty closely. The only thing different between the graph on the calculator and the graph on hand is that the calculator does not specify what happens at each of our endpoints. So we have to do that depending on where it is or equal to the closed circle or not or equal to, which is the open circle. And you can actually test your points that we did back in the very first part of this example, but I'm pretty confident that we have it correct at this time. So I have finished up all the parts of this example, so I think this is a perfect time to end this video.